Welcome to Our Lady of Sorrows Basilica, a national shrine. My name is Father Frank Falco. I'm a Servite friar, and I'm the director here at Our Lady of Sorrows. And um, I'm, I'll be with you for the next uh, five or 10 minutes to help you to understand a little bit better about this devotion to Our Lady of Sorrows. Um, the Basilica was founded as a parish in 1874 by the Servite friars. And now it is a basilica, 1956. Pope Pius XII raised it to the honor of a basilica. We also have a, a sister shrine here to St. Peregrine, the patron saint of cancer patients. And he was a Servite friar of the 13th century who was cured of cancer. And so his shrine is here. So people that visit the basilica, they not only come because of the architectural beauty of the basilica, but also for their devotion to Our Lady of Sorrows and St. Peregrine. Um, both Our Lady of Sorrows and St. Peregrine really touch the heart of a lot of people who today are uh, suffering from depression, anxiety, uh, physical difficulties, and especially cancer. And so today we're going to uh, uh, visit the Basilica and highlight the devotion to Our Lady of Sorrows. Um, some of the parishes in Chicago, like St. Mary of the Woods, has a beautiful uh, stained glass window of Our Lady of Sorrows. And so as people uh, visit the, uh, the, the parish and see the window, it would be good for them to perhaps know a little bit more about this devotion that is such a, um, an integral part of the devotion of the church. Here we are at the uh, patronal altar of Our Lady of Sorrows. Um, this altar is original to the basilica, was uh, placed here in the turn of the century, and the statue is over 100 years old. It is a statue of Our Lady of Sorrows. Whenever you see an image of Our Lady of Sorrows, you're more than likely going to see either one sword or seven swords. And I'll explain that a little bit better, but let's go back and look at this image and look at the, uh, the painting behind it and the painting to the right of the, uh, of the altar. Um, the painting behind the altar with Mary and, and the statue of Mary is really kind of the passion scene, which is at the heart of the devotion to Our Lady of Sorrows. You, we can never separate Mary, Our Lady of Sorrows, from her son, our, our Lord Jesus, who was crucified and died and rose from the dead for us. And so this whole tableau, you might call it, really centers our, our minds and our hearts. It centers on the, the, the uh, death and resurrection of our Lord, the Paschal mystery, which is at the heart of our faith as Catholics. Like St. Paul said, if Christ didn't rise from the dead, then our faith is, whole, is useless. And so when we look at the statue of Mary, she instinctively uh, touches our heart because of what she suffered uh, with, uh, when, her, when she was told by uh, Blessed Simeon and at the presentation of her child in the temple, the first sorrow, that her heart would be pierced by a sword of sorrow. So she experienced sorrow in her life. And so as we experience sorrow and difficulties and health issues and all the things that we're so concerned about in our daily lives, we can come to Mary and she's there as a mother to help us to understand and to live out and to be able to handle these many times in our lives when we're sad. And then uh, if we look at the, 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 the painting again, we see her standing at the foot of the cross. And this scene is really the scene that we have in St. John's Gospel. St. John's Gospel, toward the very end of his Gospel, he talks about the, the scene at Calvary. And he's the only one of the four evangelists that mentions Mary there at the foot of the cross. And he says, at the, at the foot of the cross is Mary, the mother of Jesus. And Jesus turns to his mother and says, behold your son. And turning to St. John, he says, behold your mother. That's the only uh, gospel that mentions that dialogue between Jesus, his mother, and St. John. And then as we turn to the wall next to us, we see that Mary is now being welcomed or taken by St. John to his home uh, as, as she waits 
uh, for the, the resurrection of her son. And so this whole scene here really is part of the devotion to Our Lady of Sorrows. So that people that, who come here and pray at the altar, they bring their petitions, they ask Mary to help them in their time of need, and then they realize that Mary was taken by St. John to his home and that the Lord always welcomes us into his home, which is the church. There are many uh, images of Our Lady of Sorrows uh, throughout the Archdiocese of Chicago. And even though a, a church is named after Our Lady of Sorrows, uh, there could be a statue or a painting or a stained glass window. We have a stained glass window. Here's an image, uh, a photo of it from St. Mary of the Woods. Um, and this image of Mary shows her in with seven swords piercing her heart. And you notice she's also uh, in, in red, which is very, very unusual for an image of Mary. We always know that most images of Mary have her in her blues. But here, to, str to stress the idea of the agony of our Lord, his, uh, death and res his death on Calvary and later resurrection, the symbol of red, the symbol of sorrow, of pain, of, of suffering, uh, is very apropos. Our statue here is in traditional Mary blue, but the two things that distinguish them, in our statue we just have a sword piercing her heart. And then in later years, Mary has the image of seven swords, which means, which is, designates the seven sorrows of Mary. This was a devotion that began more in the 17th century and the Servite Friars, our community of priests, brothers, and sisters, were instrumental in um, uh, that uh, devotion spreading throughout the Catholic Church. And the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows is September 15th, and that feast was established with the help and with the instrument, instrumentality of the Servite Friars as well. So the Seven Sorrows, if we turn around and look here in the Basilica, we see on the, the the, the pillars, there's going to be seven paintings. There's four on the east side of the basilica and three on the west side of the basilica. And these depictions are the seven sorrows of Mary that the seven swords uh, designate. And the first one is the prophecy of Simeon, the flight into Egypt, Jesus lost in Jerusalem, Mary meets Jesus on the way to Calvary, and then if we turn around and we face west, we see the other three paintings depicting the seven sorrows of Mary. We have the crucifixion of our Lord. We have Mary receiving the dead body of Jesus in her arms, and then the burial in the sepulcher of our Lord waiting for the resurrection. And so these seven sorrows then, they're all scripturally based. And that's one of the things about the devotion to Our Lady of Sorrows is that it's a scripturally based devotion. <laughs>